Hi and welcome to my video series of biotechnics explained in 5 minutes where I explain a biotechnique in less than 5 minutes or so. So if you haven't yet subscribed my channel hit that subscribe button and why are you waiting for? Today's installment we are going to talk about radioimmunoassay which uses antibodies to detect and quantitate the amount of antigen in a sample. Here is a multiple plate where you would add your sample that need to be analyzed and where you want to know about its concentration. So let's look at one well to understand the principle a bit more details. So let's say you want to detect an antigen A and you ask the question this antigen A is present in the patient sample or not. So first you coat the well with antibody against A or anti-A let's call it and now you put radio labeled antigen A or let's say any other kind of labeled antigen A and lastly you put patient serum derived or patient serum or patient's body fluid which expected to have antigen A and that's the question whether the patient serum has antigen A or not that's the thing that you want to detect so simply radioimmunoassay relies on the principle of con competitive binding where a radioactive antigen this is a tracer would actually compete with a non-radioactive antigen to bind to this particular antibody shown here now, if the patient sample has huge amount of these unlabeled antigens, then radioactivity would be decreased progressively with the increase of the antigen concentration. And a nice plot could be derived from that, which is a linear regression. From this, by extrapolating this plot, we can understand the concentration of the patient's sample where the antigen is present and Based on this standard curve, we can get accurate value of the concentration. So if you have a higher concentration, radioactivity would be very low or radioactivity or the rate of decrease of radioactivity would be quite high. And if you have a low level of antigen in the patient sample, radioactivity won't fall that much. So depending upon how much percentage of the radioactivity is reduced gives us a quantitative measure about the amount of antigen present. Now let's say we have a patient scenario 1 and a patient scenario 2 and both the cases as you can see patient 2 has more antigen present in its serum. So as expected after washing these things what you would see is the second case is the radioactivity would really fall because there most of the labeled antigens are replaced by unlabeled antigen. Why is so? Because unlabeled antigen was higher in concentration. Whereas in the patient 1, the unlabeled, uh, unlabeled antigen was not so much. As a result, not too much of radioactivity is going down and there are few radioactive antigens which are still labeling the antibody. So based on these observations, we can clearly understand a quantitative measurement about a patient sample. So let's look at the downside and the upside of this process. It is very sensitive process and it is possible to detect as low as few picograms of antigen provided your antibody is super good. And but the downside is it uses radioactive materials which could be hazardous. Now application of this radioimmunoassay is pretty broad spectrum. So it can be used for drug detection from blood samples, blood bank screening for contaminants such as a hepatitis B virus so it can really scan for hepatitis B antigens in a blood bank sample which ensures you don't have a contaminant blood in the blood bank it can be used to detect cancer biomarkers which are soluble other than that measuring hormone levels measurement of disease associated antigen levels all of these usage can be done by radioimmunoassay it can be also be used uh, to detect certain vitamins and other metabolites uh, provided specific antibodies present against them because the whole process is dependent upon antigen antibody interaction so you really need specificity of interaction between antigen and antibody otherwise this whole process won't work so that is pretty much about radioimmunoassay and we learned about what is the usage of this thing and the sensitivity of the technique is great which makes it still a technique to be used today in the medical research so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.